class. Yes, there might be idealistic politicians that got into the game to change the world. But if they're good, any good at their job, they're no longer changing the world. They're serving the interests of their donors if they want to rise in, in the world of politics. They say, write you congressman. Who the hell is this jackass that you have to write? He should be at the forefront of technology and knowledge. You don't have to write him. I'm sure most of you have flown in airliners. You don't have to write the pilot saying you're flying at an angle. Straighten out, God damn it. He knows his business, that's how he got the job. The people in Washington are lawyers and businessmen and can solve no problems. If the bottom line and it's a profit-driven world, then those interests are going to be served first and everything is going to be secondary. And, and that's the sad reality of it. There is no value system that's put out there that is actually beneficial to humanity because it's based on consumerism and profit making. And we use artificial pumping in animals to make them grow faster. So if you can multiply the cells in the chicken faster, you, you can sell it sooner. But does that have an effect on the human body? They don't worry about that. They worry about the sale of chickens. Wealth is going to the rich faster than any other time in history. The success of the industrialized world has been dependent on the failure and the lack of development of the developing world. I mean, the reason that they're stifled is because they are indebted to the first world. We wouldn't be prospering if it weren't for the labor that's going on and the indentured servitude that's going on in the entire developing country. And so that's the power dynamic can never change in that respect because it's literally dependent on it being that way. The dirty and dangerous work done by children. The jobs down in the pits are typically reserved for teenagers with only tree limbs to brace the mine walls. The risk to them is real. Rich governments like to say they're helping poor countries develop. But who's developing who here? Each year, poor countries are paying about $600 billion in debt service to rich countries on loans that have already been paid off many times over. And then there's the money that poor countries lose from trade rules imposed by rich countries. Altogether, that's more than $2 trillion every year. Money systems have existed for centuries, and whether we realize it or not, have always been used to control behavior by limiting the purchasing power of the majority of people. One example of this is the criminal justice system. Many proclaim prisons don't work, but ultimately, prisons are a resounding success as a tool for social control to safeguard the political and economic established system. If you hire people whose only expertise is caging people to try to fix social problems, you're not going to get a very good solution. But I think that they're very good at caging people, and I think that's why mass incarceration has been a huge success for the ruling class in this country. The United States is really number one in a lot of things, and I think the biggest thing that we can say that we're number one in is how many people we lock up. And the United States has roughly 5% of the world's population, but we've got 25% of the world's prisoners. China has four times as many people as the United States does and half as many prisoners. The United States has more prisoners than the Soviet Union did at the height of uh, the purges and the collectivization in the 1930s and the infamous uh, Soviet Gulag. Poverty is a vicious cycle, rarely escaped by the poor. Studies found that scarcity can reduce mental capacity and cognitive performance. In children, it affects their brain development and memory. Additionally, the poor are often forced to live in areas of low air quality. Far from being a problem for only the poor, all areas of the socioeconomic spectrum suffer when our air, food, and water are polluted by fossil fuel emissions and radiation from nuclear accidents.